for this slide you'd require to have uh, your pen and paper ready and take some notes what happens with uh, increase in heart rate now you know the cardiac cycle takes certain amount of time at rest uh, the general resting heart rate is about uh, 70 to 90 bits uh, per minute with increase in heart rate uh, due to exercise there is a reduced amount of time for each contraction and relaxation of uh, the heart that means for each cardiac cycle you have got less amount of time now electrocardiographically it has been shown that uh, the systole phase the contraction phase of the heart more so remains constant throughout even with exercise so the heart takes about the same amount of time to contract doesn't matter whether you are exercising or not exercising that means the bit that uh, is compromised is the diastole now what's the problem if the diastole phase reduces considerably so let's say that somebody is exercising maximally and their heart rate is uh, reaching uh, say 180 bits per minute or 190 bits per minute the the diastole phase in this case would be minimal now the importance of diastole is that it helps the heart to fill with blood now if there is no time for the heart to fill then there is no way the heart can pump out more amount of blood if the heart cannot pump uh, out adequate amount of blood to the brain or to itself uh, then it leads uh, to deoxygenation of vital tissue and it can uh, lead uh, to dizziness and a sudden collapse The long-term changes uh, to the cardiovascular system uh, in response to exercise. Now, depending upon the type of activity, there would be changes to the heart of uh, individuals involved with long-term exercise. If somebody is involved with uh, aerobic exercises, usually the heart uh, chambers dilate. So, with less uh, number of contraction, the heart is actually able to pump equal amount of uh, blood uh, you'd be amazed to see some of uh, the resting heart rates of uh, long distance marathon runners sometimes it can be as low as 36 to 40 which uh, otherwise in sedentary individual would be considered to be bradycardia and uh, a serious uh, condition and this is perfectly normal for athletes uh, involved with aerobic activities on the other hand Athletes involved with anaerobic activities uh, like, uh, say, uh, weightlifting, they develop um, heart which is of uh, the equal size uh, of a sedentary individual, but uh, it is massive in, in the form that the musculature is very well developed. And finally, with increased activities, there is recapillarization of the muscles so that the muscles get more amount of oxygen. Now let us explore the effect of exercise on blood pressure. On the right hand side in the graph you can see that with increase in intensity of exercise the diastolic blood pressure does not vary much. However, with increase in intensity the systolic blood pressure uh, fluctuates quite dramatically. Um, in recovery phase it uh, reduces uh, drastically as well. With strenuous exercises, uh, people commonly tend to hold their breath. It is very natural because uh, when you are doing heavy activities, um, you require your trunk muscles to be recruited to bear that weight. So by holding your breath, you actually facilitate uh, the tr trunk muscles to act as a corset to spread the weight around. However, there is a negative effect to this if you are holding a breath and trying to 
lift a heavy weight then you are increasing the intrathoracic pressure quite considerably with normal intrathoracic pressure the heart doesn't have a problem pumping the blood but uh, now uh, when there is increase in intrathoracic uh, pressure the heart is effectively pumping the blood out but the blood uh, cannot enter back into the heart because uh, the vena cava um, that supply the blood back into the heart they have to um, take the blood against this massive amount of uh, pressure as a result there is reduced uh, filling of the heart again because of reduced filling of the heart there is not enough blood going into uh, here is a question for you which exercises do you think are more strenuous arm exercises or leg exercises now the answer is actually in the graph on the right hand side uh, apologies you can't actually see um, the x-axis of uh, the uh, graph um, it shows uh, the variation in heart rate and blood pressure with arm exercises and leg exercises as you can see with arm exercises the heart rate and blood pressure increases uh, more than leg exercises this is a very significant piece of information because um, you would deal with uh, patients uh, following cardiac surgery now often you think that arm exercises would be easier to do however because of their effect on blood pressure and heart rate usually the cardiac patients are started with leg exercises rather than arm exercises.